All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is walkthrough day. If you didn't get a chance to see our build video, check the description below. We'll leave a link there for you. And we're gonna start from the front, work our way to the back, show you just what we did, why we did it, and how it all works together. All right, first on the list, our Southern Style Off-Road Bumper. This was kind of a bear to put in, but once we got it in, we were completely happy with it. The engineering behind it, how solid of a bumper it is, and just the way it looks was, uh, it, it met our expectations. Um, inside that bumper, we have the Warren Xeon 10S. This is a 10,000 pound winch with synthetic line, and uh, we decided to eliminate as much metal in our recoveries as we could, so we actually just put a soft shackle on the end of the eyelet, and. Uh, ran that past Warren to make sure that was cool and they said yes. We've actually been with Warren for about five years now and one of the reasons that we picked Warren in the first place was because of their reputation for reliability. We didn't want to be out in the middle of nowhere relying on a piece of equipment that was subpar and we felt like Warren was uh, top of the food chain so couldn't be happier with it, been using it for years and along with our Warren winch we've got a 28 inch Heist light bar in the front with uh, pods on either side and those in combination with our ditch lights gives us about 180 degrees of uh, light so it, it gives a good spread. It's not the most intense light out there but it definitely does the job. All right, moving along into the engine bay, uh, one of the first things we wanted to do was a dual battery system. And we've gone through a couple of different systems and never been completely happy with it, so we kind of built our own. Um, so excess power batteries provided us with a uh, group 27 for our house battery and then a group 24 for our auxiliary. Uh, we wanted a little bit bigger for our auxiliary, but there wasn't enough room, so we used the off-grid engineering uh, auxiliary battery tray to tie that thing down. And so in order to keep everything running right and the batteries charged, we used the Blue C automatic charging relay. We figured that would be kind of the best smart solution for keeping everything monitored. And to control all that power to all of our accessories is the Switch Pro's SP9100. This thing is killer. Uh, not only does it make installing everything a lot easier um, because it eliminates any fuses or relays, it has a ton of features that you can access off of their app. And now the Blue C automatic charging relay and the Switch Pro is mounted on a custom plate that we made and just bolted it into the wall to house all that. It was the only way that we could shoehorn in all the electrical that we had and still keep it generally clean looking. We wanted everything to be accessible and one of the things that was kind of hard to place was all the fuse for all these high output wires. So we used a Stinger audio fuse box to combine all those into one unit to make them a little bit more accessible. And as anybody who goes off-road regularly knows, uh, airing up and airing down is always an issue. So we went with the ARB dual compressor uh, for reliability and just for the simple fact that the air output is second to none. And we can't go very much further without talking about the vinyl wrap. This is something that we kind of chose to do on a whim. One, to protect the paint, and two, just to give it a little bit different look from what we'd had before. You can't really tell, it's a super subtle look, but we left the Outlaw Expedition decals on as a slightly embossed decal underneath the vinyl wrap. We thought that was kind of a cool, subtle touch to it and uh, but overall we've been completely happy with it and uh, definitely would suggest that for anybody worried about paint scratches on the trail there next up on the list is our trusty Amazon snorkel um, had a lot of conversations about this and whether or not the Amazon snorkels are uh, adequate and uh, it's a very good question and so far I can't really complain about the decision we made to go with the cheaper snorkel. So the one thing I will say for this is the template is nowhere near close to where it needs to be. So if you do end up getting yourself something a little cheaper, make sure you take the time to line it all up and make sure it's going to go incorrectly. All right, so let's move south to the wheels. Uh, right now we're running the Falcon AT3Ws and I couldn't be happier with these. The only complaint that I could possibly have is, same complaint I have with any AT is when you get in a little mud, they become a slick and they're pretty much useless. Um, this is no different, but in snow, on rocks, um, it's got a pretty fat sidewall, so you've got a little bit more abrasion resistance to rocks. When we go down to South America, however, we're gonna switch to an MT. We just feel like the terrain is gonna be a little bit different down there than it is up here, and it's gonna handle the mud of South America a lot better than these ATs will. All right, holding up this beautiful beast is uh, the Old Man Emu BP-51 suspension. So the reason we chose Old Man Emu is the same 
reason we chose most of our modifications, reliability. Old Man Emu is a company that's been around for a long time and have a deep history of making expedition springs and suspensions, and that was important to us because of the style of trip that we were taking. And to complement the BP-51 suspension, we needed upper control arms and a joint that accommodated long travel and wasn't gonna squeak or break down on us. And so we went with the Icon upper control arms with the Delta joint, which is essentially a uniball with a sealed cap to prevent dust from getting in and the proverbial squeaking. All right, no overland build would be complete without a set of rock sliders to protect that soft underbelly and uh, southern style off-road along with the, both the bumpers provided the uh, rock sliders for our GX470. All right, let's move our way to the top where we have our favorite awning that we've ever used, the Rhino Rack Batwing awning. This is a 270 awning that comes off of the driver's side and I think the thing I like best about the Rhino Rack awning is just how easy it is to set up and break down and how intuitive it is to use. The Batwing awning is mounted to our Southern Style Off-Road Aluminum Rack. Uh, this thing is pretty stout and it actually came with cutouts for alley lights, which was a pretty cool feature. Up on top here you see our Plano rifle boxes. These are 52 inch boxes that are pretty low profile and lockable and that's why we chose these to be our storage up top. All right, so we got a lot going on in the rear, so we'll start from the top and work our way down. One of the biggest questions we get asked is, what is the big black antenna on the back of the truck? And what that is, is the antenna for the 4GX cell phone booster from WeBoost. And the inevitable next question is, does it work? And yes, it works if your expectations are right. This isn't gonna create a signal, this just boosts any signal that's there. And for us, it's important to increase the range of our cell service. We already talked about our favorite tires on the planet, the Falcon AT3Ws, which are mounted to the Southern Style Off-Road rear bumper to complement the front rack and sliders. This thing is engineered like a rocket ship. So one of the things I was impressed most about the SSO rear bumper was the fact that you didn't have to open it in multiple stages. So <clears throat> with a simple open of the latch and pop of the door, the whole thing slides open together and it all works as one unit, which is super easy for one-handed operation when you're trying to handle kids, travel, and everything else. Typically you'd see red roto packs for fuel on the rear of a vehicle, but we went with water because we increased our fuel capacity to 55 gallons with the LRA fuel tank. So why add the extra time, weight, and energy over your, say, your typical jerry cans? Well, the first goes without saying, the miles you can travel with this particular tank more than doubles your range, and that means less fuel stops and no more hopscotching from town to town in search of gas. You'd need seven typical jerry cans to equal one of these tanks, and once you figure out where to mount the fuel, you still don't have the ability to utilize it on the go. So as you unpack this upgrade, it pretty much speaks for itself. Now, Cruiser Brothers is an awesome US-based company that imports these long-range tanks from Australia, but they also have a host of other aftermarket products for your adventure build. Okay, let's start inside the cabin. Between the camera gear and everything else we needed to keep a modern family connected, we needed to make sure we had ample outlets to charge all these devices. So we installed six USB outlets, two in the front for mom and dad, two in the rear for the kids, and two in the center for the camera gear. Through the experience of building the 80 series for the Oregon Trail Expedition, we learned that electrical is always evolving and you need to give yourself the ability to upgrade your system if you have additional accessories that you need to install. So we installed a Blue Sea fuse box in the rear cubby and that fits nicely right next to the brain for our WeBoost. Now most of our gear will be housed in the trailer that we'll be towing through South America, but for the things that needed to stay in the truck, we needed to be a little bit creative on how we were storing things. The GX470 has three rows of seats and we opted to take the center center row out and leave the rear for the kids, that leaves the middle open so when we're setting up camp or at pit stops they have somewhere to hang out. But because of the lack of space we needed to be creative with our storage solutions. Although it's a little utilitarian we decided to go with the Molly system. We really couldn't find anything that would change and evolve with a family as kids get older and we change our traveling style. Which brought us to the Blue Ridge Overland Molly panels for the front seats and also the orange box fabrication molly panels for the rear windows. This gave us storage for both mom, dad, and the kids, and was versatile enough that we could change it if we needed to. And our favorite of all the storage solutions are Blue Ridge Overland Gear Attic. This is actually made for the 80 series, but it fits nicely in the GX, and houses all our loose gear like jackets, pillows, blankets, that kind of thing. So let's talk about the cockpit where I'll be spending most of my time. The goal here was to keep it as factory looking as possible while still adding switches, outlets, etc. And Expedition Essentials provided a great solution to put the Switch Pro controller in the sunglass holder. 
Now with the suspension upgrades and the removal of the airbags, we could now utilize the air ride control for additional USB outlets and the switch to control them. And last but not least, my favorite upgrade has to be the placement of the auxiliary fuel gauge, which fits nicely in what used to be a 12 volt car outlet. So that was the in and out front to back walkthrough of the AUX 470. If you liked it, have a question, or just want to say hi, comment below. Don't forget to subscribe, and we'll see you guys next week when we start back up with 5 Minute Fridays. Peace!